Hello guys and welcome back to another video. This one is going to be the first in a series called Deciphering where each video is going to be focused on explaining an aspect of photography or videography. I intend for future videos to cover the most requested for topics however for this first video I've chosen a topic which for me was the first thing I wanted to know when jumping into the world of cameras. I am of course talking about bokeh and subject isolation. When starting out I found myself frantically researching into what exactly made this witchcraft achievable and when I broke it down to all of the core components which made the effect possible it really just came down to knowing what works best with my kit as well as having a better overall positional awareness of my scene. So let's start off by going through some definitions and the theory behind what makes for good subject isolation. So bokeh, bokeh or bouquet, however you want to pronounce it is simply Japanese for blur. So when you hear someone talking about bokeh, they're referring to the quality of the out of focus area of an image or a video. The term however over time has sort of been hijacked as some when they use it are referring only to the out of focus points of light. But for keeping things as true to the meaning, whenever you hear me using the word bokeh, it will be me talking about anything that's out of focus. So what is the point in this bokeh and why should we really care about achieving it in the first place? Well the main reason is subject isolation, some use the effect to help them tell a story by bringing the focus of the viewer to the subject such as a person during their dialogue in a movie. You'd also see in recent years it's been used in a lot of video product reviews. <coughs> Another reason might just be to add some creative flair. So there are several things which when combined make for some smooth bokeh and the following techniques are the same for both photo and video work. So we'll start off with the hardware and I'll try and keep this from getting too technical however if you've got a ridiculous amount of time on your hands and you want to know the science behind how and why everything works check out the links in the video description where you'll be directed to some graphs and some long numbers that you can read into your heart's content. This deciphering series isn't designed to analyse and number crunch I'm purely just intending to give you guys the basic digestible information you need to achieve a particular look. So starting off with the camera and more specifically the image sensor, the larger the sensor the better it will be able to isolate a subject. And that's not to say that you need a humongous medium format sensor camera for all of this to work, it's just that the larger the sensor is the better and the easier the effect will be to achieve. The next is the lens, so there are two main things with a lens that will help achieve good bokeh, these are the f-stop number or the aperture value number and the focal length. So the larger the aperture or the smaller the f-stop number, the better the effect will be and vice versa. If you want everything in your scene in focus, go for the largest f-stop number that your lens supports. With focal length, the more you zoom in, the greater the effect will be, even if at the far telephoto end, your lens's aperture closes down slightly. Lastly, is being aware of the position of your subject relative to the surroundings, as well as their distance from the lens. You don't want your subject right up against the wall, you need them with as much distance as possible from what you want blurred out, be it the foreground or the background. Also, bringing the lens as close as you can to your subject will enhance the amount they're isolated. For example, with portraits, you'll always achieve better subject isolation when aiming to get a headshot compared to being right back and going for a torso or full body shot. Right, now that is plenty enough of me talking, let's jump into some examples of how I brought all of these steps together and in these examples I used a Canon 700D set to aperture priority and auto ISO. The lens I used is a pretty inexpensive lens which full details of can be found in the link down in the description below but it's a very basic 55 to 250mm zoom lens which cost me about £120. The previously mentioned steps when combined are just a way for you to squeeze the most out of your lens and you can achieve good results using a standard 18 to 55mm kit lens. However, the effects between each step are exaggerated more with a long zoom lens like the one I'll be using, making it easier for you guys to gauge the results each time we add a new step. Right, let's get on with it shall we? So our first image here as you can see is in less than ideal circumstances, I have my subject, in this case Francis, standing up against a wall of leaves, my aperture is set to f13 and my focal length is the widest this lens can achieve at 55mm. As you can see it's pretty dull, I have her composed where I want her but there's nothing about the photo which focuses my attention. So we'll now work on adding our different points together and see how good of a bokeh we can achieve. So firstly we'll start by moving our subject into the open and you can see already without changing any of the camera settings or my distance from the subject, purely just creating a distance of about 3 meters between Francis and the background, the picture is already more pleasing to the eye as those leaves in the background are starting to lose a bit of detail. 
The next step is to open up the aperture to the widest that the lens supports. In this case is f4 and again the difference is obvious compared to our previous shot. It's a noticeable improvement as the detail in the leaves have almost all disappeared. Adding to this, let's close the gap between the lens and our subject as this forces the lens to focus closer, yet again rendering what is not in focus to be even more blurry. Lastly, we can now zoom into our subject even if this forces us to step back and with this lens at 250mm, the aperture stops down to f5.6. However, due to the compression that zooming in adds to the scene, we are left with even more subject isolation to complete all of our steps and give us our final image. Not bad for a lens which costs 120 quid. So as you can see, combining each of the techniques together progressed the image from an uninterested mass of detail into an obvious focus for the viewer's attention with a nice amount of subject isolation and background bokeh. So that's pretty much all the information that you guys will need to know to go out into the big wide world and create the subject isolation and bokeh of your dreams. There might have been a lot of information at the start but it's not really until you see it all come together and then experiment for yourself that it all starts to make sense. To be able to demonstrate all of the different steps, I had to use a zoom lens. However, you can achieve excellent results using a wide aperture fixed focal length lens, AKA a fast prime like the one I used here. And almost every first and third party manufacturers out there have the equivalent to this lens, which is famously known as Canon's Nifty 50 or Plastic Fantastic, which is FYI what I'm using to record this video now. It's a 50 millimeter fast prime with a maximum aperture of F1.8. And as it's inexpensive, it really is the first lens I recommend to buy for those starting out in photography as an inexpensive way of experimenting and trying new things. Right, last bit, I promise, if you feel like getting fancy with your newly found skill and want to add a touch of creative flair, try cutting some shapes into some cardboard and transforming the cliche out of focus points of light into something to suit the mood of your scene. Well, I hope this video has been informative to watch and has addressed any questions that some of you might have had about subject isolation and bokeh. Remember to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram or any of those other links down below if you have any more questions or if you have a particular topic in mind that you want me to include in this deciphering series. Thank you all for sticking around, like this video, subscribe, check me out on Facebook where I post all of my photography and I'll see you guys in the next one.